Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm back to break down this 14 game MLB DFS slate on DraftKings and FanDuel. Before we get into it, if you do enjoy the content at any point in this video, if you could please take a moment to leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you for all the support that I've received so far. On the way to 1,000 subscribers, goal is to get there by the end of the MLB DFS season and it is my promise to you I'll be here all MLB DFS season long breaking down these MLB DFS slates. The best possible way that I can to give you guys some top-notch quality content. I go through a lot of good stats that are going to help you with your lineups. I've received a lot of good feedback in the comments. A lot of good feedback from my premium package members as well. If you are interested, I do offer a premium package. It's linked below in the description. You get access to all the same tools that I use when building my own DFS lineups. I think it's going to greatly help you become a much more profitable MLB DFS player. If you are playing a lot, um, you know, more than what would just say a casual fan and where you're playing... A small amount of money occasionally i would highly recommend that and then don't forget to stay tuned to the end of the video for my home run call of the day and let's go ahead and start breaking down this slate today as always i like to go ahead and sort my sheet by k rate it's fantasy sports we get points for strikeouts figure out the top pitchers we want to play on the slate today and then we'll transition over to bats after and the top guy on the slate today is going to be garrett cole taking on the kansas city royals 37.2 percent k overall a 16 percent swing strike rate 33.8% K rate against righties and a 41% K rate against lefties. Uh, as far as the sticky stuff and all that stuff that's going on in baseball right now and how that's impacting him, have seen this K rate dip a little bit, I think. After the they really cracked down on him in his first stop, first start, I did a little bit of a dive into his spin rate and velocity, and both of those were actually up. So I'm a little confused as far as how this is going to impact him. From watching the games, as far as like an eye test being a Yankees fan, I will say it seems like his location's a little off. The velocity, the spin rate, and all that stuff, I don't really think is much of an issue. But he seems to be leaving a lot more of those fastballs over the plate rather than on the corner. Whether that was just you know a coincidence in those starts and he didn't have it, or whether that's a direct correlation to this stuff that they're cracking down on, I don't know. Uh, but the guy tops the slate in the K rate. He's taking on a Kansas City Royals team that's not the most threatening in the world. They do not strike out the most compared to other teams. So, uh, But overall, I have said I think that might be worth paying down and pitching for a little bit here until we find out if this is really going to impact these pitchers and what's the case. We did see you Darvish go out there and throw an absolute gem last night. So um, you might have to be in your own camp as far as what you're truly believing in, but that's just kind of my overall breakdown of what's going on with him. I don't think his velocity or carry or, I mean, uh, spin rate or anything like that is going to go down. Location seems to be... A little bit more of an issue so that could be obviously an issue if you're throwing fastballs in the middle that can burn you but max scherzer next on the list i uh, threw a 40 pitch bullpen session saturday plans to start tuesday um as far as his pitch count i think he's gonna be fine it was said it was a minor setback uh, he's expected to go. I think he was just thrown out to keep his arm loose, and I think he's going to be just perfectly fine, and that's great because he gets to take on a Philadelphia team that's been striking out a bunch. 34.4% K overall, 60% swing strike rate for Scherzer, 37.3% K rate against righties, and a 31.4% K rate against lefties. Do prefer to target him against right-handed heavy lineups, if at all possible. And as far as the Philadelphia lineup is concerned, looking at what they're expected to roll out today, they do have a pretty blended lineup. So, up and down, a lot of right, left going on. But there's plenty of strikeouts to be had, and I think that Max Scherzer is definitely a good option unless we see that he's going to be limited in pitch count. We have Freddie Peralta taking on the Arizona Diamondbacks. The team has been really struggling. They're dealing with a lot of injuries right now, and he has a high K rate, a 33.4% K overall, 34.7% K rate against righties, and a 31.8% K rate against lefties. Ground ball fly ball stuff isn't always the best against those right-handed hitters, uh, but taking on an Arizona squad that has been really struggling, as mentioned. Could be a good opportunity for him to go up there and have a great game. Comes in at 9.5 on FanDuel over on DraftKings. He is priced at 10K. Uh, so, you know, whether he's in the same op elite option as these other guys, I'm not quite sure, but we can say that we're dealing with a bit of a watered down lineup in the Arizona Diamondbacks at oftentimes and a team that's really, really struggling. So, you always like to capitalize on that, of course. Speaking of teams that are struggling, the Pittsburgh Pirates taking on Lucas Giolito, 32.3% carry overall, a 15.8 swing strike rate, 32% carry against righties, a 32.5% carry against lefties. He's got some really good stuff. And, uh, you know, this slate's loaded. We definitely have a lot of options, and Giolito is definitely one of them. Comes in as a 189 favorite. It's in Pittsburgh, which is a great pitcher's ballpark. It does look like there's going to be 10 mile an hour winds blowing out the center there, but uh, Giolito is still really great stuff. And, this Pittsburgh lineup really doesn't scare us. So I think he's in a great option to really do some damage here. 
Blake Snell taking on the Los Angeles Dodgers. Always has the K upside, but the Dodgers just really don't strike out the most. Uh, so, you know, that's not always the most appealing spot to be targeting. However, with that being said, you know, they only have a 3.83 implied run total. He does strike out quite a bit of guys. And the bottom line is starting to become more of a strikeout liability, I think, than we've seen when the Dodgers team is completely healthy. So, wouldn't call you crazy whatsoever if you want to go there. Charlie Morton taking on the Mets team that's been struggling quite a bit as well. We have just a bunch of pitching ops on this league. I don't mean to name every single guy, but you kind of have to break down who's in what spot and why they're a great option and then determine based on price, you know, who you're willing to pay down for. Charlie Morton's been a little bit rough as far as Walker, a little inconsistent and that kind of thing. He's taken on a Mets team that has been struggling quite a bit recently. Uh, I think that he could be in a good spot here. For sure, taking on this squad. Uh, I think there's plenty of K rates to go around. Zach Gallon taking on Milwaukee. Another team that's been striking out a bunch all season long. 28.2% K overall, 32% K rate against righties, and a 24.3% K rate against lefties. So uh, we do prefer to target him against very right-handed heavy lineups. So that's where there could be one issue here taking on this Milwaukee Brewers squad because they do have quite a few lefties in there. But they're all lefties with very high K rates. So Zach Gallon could be an interesting option for you for sure. And once we get passed on him, uh, I think things start to become a lot less interesting very quickly. So, you know, we've been talking about a lot of guys that we're really interested in up here. Um, and I think that they're kind of the core of which we're looking to play today because things do dip down pretty quickly. We do have Tariq Skubal taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. He's been striking out quite a bit of hitters now. 27.8% K overall, a 28.2% K rate against righties, and a 25.6% K rate against lefties. Has looked a lot better as of late, but he, he has shown that he was very, very bad against right-handed hitting. As far as his recent starts, has been a lot better, so maybe that's not really the case. But I tend to think the Cardinals, maybe you could play against him, uh, or you could play Scooble against him. Either way, I think he's still going to give up a lot of hard contact. I think he's still going to strike out a lot of hitters. Maybe kind of like a Matthew Boyd type of build on the same se same team. So, um, you know, Clayton Kershaw taking on the Padres. I'm not too interested in targeting the Padres. They don't really strike out too much. There'd be two more guys that I'm really looking to on this slate today. Uh, from the surface level, of course, we do have some other guys like Granky's taking on Baltimore. That's a great matchup. Um, you know, we have Johan Oviedo taking on the Detroit Tigers. They strike out a bunch, so maybe possibly looking at him a little bit. Uh, and then Cole Orban taking on Texas. Those are all just matchups, though, and they don't really have the best K rate stuff. So the guys that I, the guys that I'd be looking to would be Andrew. Well, there's three more guys: Andrew Heaney, Eduardo Rodriguez, and Zach Wheeler. Andrew Heaney's taking on the San Francisco Giants. Their guys don't really scare us too much. He has a 27.7% K overall, 28.5% K rate against righties, and a 25.5% K rate against lefties. And as mentioned, the the Giants really don't scare us, and he is a 129 favorite. So I think you could look to them. Eduardo Rodriguez taking on the Tampa Bay Rays. Their team that's been terrible against left-handed pitching all season long. Eduardo Rodriguez does have a pretty decent K rate, and when he's in a good opportunity, uh, taking on teams that aren't quite as disciplined, they may swing and miss at his pitches. That's when we really like to play him because he can have a bit of a walk issue at times, but when he doesn't, he can be locked in and definitely, you know, get you quite a few strikeouts. So I think Eduardo Rodriguez is an interesting option. And then lastly, Zach Wheeler taking on the Washington Nationals. Has been dominant all season long, really good across the board, good ground ball, fly ball stuff, lots of strikeout rate. And, uh, you know, he's priced way up there with some of the elite options on the slate today. And while he might not fall in the top category as far as K rate over the last couple of years and his overall numbers, uh, he's really ramped it up this year, and the ground ball, fly ball stuff across the board is very good. So you feel good putting him in your lineups. And with that being said, let's go ahead and transition over to bats. As always, I like to go ahead and sort my sheet by Sierra, scale or active ERA. It's a good way of determining how good a pitcher's been in the past and how good they're expected to be in the future. And the bottom guy on the slate today is going to be Johan Oviedo. We had mentioned maybe pitching him against Detroit. But he's been pretty bad. A 400 slugging given up to righties. A 426 slugging given up to lefties. If you want to target him, I definitely have no issues with that. You would prefer to target him with the right-handed bat specifically in this lineup based upon his numbers. He is a right-handed hurler himself, but has been a little bit reverse splitsy. But you could stack up the Tigers as a very low on stack and maybe uh, pay off for your in tournaments. The guy's the worst on the slate. They don't have the highest implied run total. And um, while he doesn't give up the most hard contact against lefties, righties has been pretty bad. And overall, it's just been pretty bad. Unfortunately, the Detroit Tigers lineup doesn't have the best lineup for us to capitalize on it, but uh, definitely a viable option. Kyle Freeland taking on the Seattle Mariners. Ground ball, fly ball stuff is pretty good, but against righty specifically, he does give up a lot of hard contact on the ground for the most part, but a 539 slugging, giving up a 378 Woba. 
taking on Seattle squad that once again, unfortunately, we can't really capitalize on his weaknesses too, too much with the squad, but they do have a 4.76 implied run total. So if that tells you anything, that's pretty good sign because uh, typically speaking, you know, you're not going to see the Mariners with that high of a run total, implied run total. Uh, so if that doesn't tell you to pass some interest in these guys, I don't know what will. Mitch Hanniger, Ty France, Dylan Moore, Luis Torrens, and then lefties, J.P. Crawford, Kyle Seeger, and uh, Jacob Bowers could definitely take advantage when they go to the bullpen because the Colorado Rockies bullpen is pretty bad as well. Uh, as far as Freeland himself, we definitely do prefer to target those righties, but if they can get him out of the game, work the, pick, work the pitch count a little bit, they're going to be in pretty good line to face a pretty bad bullpen. And then the next guy on our list is in that same exact game, and Chris Flexen taking on this Colorado Rockies squad. Really not the greatest across the board, but really not the worst either, and I really don't like targeting the Colorado Rockies on the road. So I think Flexen can kind of pitch decent enough in this game where we aren't too interested in these this Rocky stack. So I probably wouldn't be going there too, too much. Tyler Anderson taking on the Chicago White Sox. This is going to be one of my first spots that I'm really excited about. Doesn't really give up the most hard contact in a weird way, but gives up a bunch of slugging to righties. A 502 slugging, 357 Wobo. The ground ball, fly ball stuff really is the greatest. Uh, so his numbers do contradict themselves a little bit. But most notably, he's taken on a team today in the Chicago White Sox that really excels against left-handed pitching. Fortunately, it's not the best ballpark. They do only have a 4.34 implied run total, but when you have guys in the lineup like Tim Anderson, Jose Abreu, Yasmani Grandal, Andrew Vaughn, you can definitely take advantage. Unfortunately, it looks like it's a little water right down right now. We don't have Yerman Mercedes in there. Uh, so for that reason, might not be as good of a stack as typically we would think for these Chicago White Sox, but I definitely do get excited anytime I take it on a lefty and one that gives up some fly ball issues. Always like to see that. Jordan Lyles taking on the Oakland Athletics. This guy has been a great one to target. Ground ball, fly ball stuff is not good. Hard contact stuff is not good. A 479 slugging given up to righties and a 489 slugging given up to lefties. Really bad against both sides of the plate, specifically against lefties though. Very, very bad. So this Oakland squad, you can definitely be stacking them up today. As far as their implied run total, they do have a 4.89 implied run total. And uh, yeah, really definitely going to like the lefty in Matt Olson. He'll be my favorite bat in the lineup. But you got Mark Canna, Matt Chapman, Ramon Laureano, Judd Lowry, Chad Pinder, Alexander, Sean Murphy. You can stack up this whole lineup and feel pretty good about it. They're on the road, taking on a Texas team. That's not the best as far as their bullpen's concerned either. And uh, Lyles is expected to be the long reliever. They're going to bring in Hearn first here. So as far as his numbers are concerned, he is a left-handed hurler that gives up a lot more hard contact to righties. So it's a nice little blend here because if they bring in Hearn and then they bring in Jordan Lyles, you know, you, Matt also might not be in the best matchup against the lefty to start things off, but these righties are going to be in a great matchup to start things off, and then it'll switch to vice versa. And it's not like we're too worried about the righties being in a terrible matchup when Lyles comes in. So it uh, could work out pretty good for you there as far as uh, how that stuff breaks down. Sandy Alcantara taking on the Toronto Blue Jays. I do think that he's... Not exactly the best guy to be targeting when it comes to the Blue Jays lineup because he's very good against right-handed hitting, really struggles against left-handed hitting. So uh, this right-handed heavy Blue Jays lineup, I'm not getting all too excited to target today like I typically would. Obviously, they have one of the uh, top offenses in the league. It's also in Miami, which is one of the best, I mean, yeah, one of the best pitching ballparks in the league, one of the worst hitting ballparks. So uh, Toronto's a no for me today. You got Cole Orban in that same Texas Oakland game. He's been a left handed hurler that really has struggled more so against left handed hitting, ironically, but against righties, he hasn't been the greatest either. If you want to stack up this Texas team today, I wouldn't call you crazy. They have a 4.11 implied run total. Isaiah Kennefrafella, Nick Solak, Adolis Garcia, Joey Gallo, Eli White, Nate Lowe. The great thing is we could definitely play a bat like a Joey Gallo, lefty on lefty in this spot with Orban's numbers. And some people may not be aware that he struggles against those lefties as much. So the Texas Rangers stack could be a sneaky one today. One stack that's not so sneaky is the Houston Astros taking on Jorge Lopez in the Baltimore Orioles. Ground ball, fly ball stuff is terrible. Hard contact stuff is terrible. There's about 439 slugging to righties. The ground ball, fly ball stuff's a little bit better there, but against lefties is where it gets really, really bad. Uh, so, of course, you know, a power back like you are on Alvarez is going to be in a great spot tonight. It's in Camden Yards in Baltimore, which is a great hitting ballpark. And, uh, you know, definitely going to like the lefties, definitely going to like the righties, going to like all the above. But if I'm picking my favorite bats, of course, Brantley and Alvarez are going to be in great spots. Abraham Toro, and then, you know, of course, Altuve, uh, Carlos Correa, and you just get Gary Elterron out your stack at the top of the order. And then you can put Chaz McCormick with a bunch of power at the bottom of the order, Mark Maldonado and Miles Straw. Uh, Lopez isn't good. The Baltimore Orioles pitching has just been dreadful. The bullpen, the starters, 
Uh, you know, they're going to be a team that we're looking to target with a lot of stacks the rest of the year. So, of course, no issues with you going there. Anthony Desclafani taking on the Los Angeles. Angels is a guy that's very easy to explain, very good against righties, very bad against lefties. It's really that simple as far as the Los Angeles Angels lefties um, tonight. Of course, Shohei Otani, Jared Walsh, going to really like those guys, specifically Otani. The guy's just been absolutely on fire, and he's been running into a lot of really good matchups, and he gets another one tonight. So, uh, you know, not complaining when you have a guy that's on fire and he gets to take on an easier opponent. Definitely going to be an intriguing option. Uh, going through this list, as far as these guys in the mid-range here, I'm not all getting too excited to target them, honestly. The next guy to be looking to target really would be Ross Stripling taking on Miami, but we had already mentioned uh, this is in Miami. It's not the best hitting environment, and uh, it's not like the Marlins have the most stacked lineup, but Ross Stripling is a guy that really does struggle against right-handed hitting when he does. So a Marlins squad that you can stack up with guys like Starling Marte, Jesus Aguilar, Adam Duvall, Miguel Rojas in the middle of the order. Could be a little sneaky today, and the Toronto bullpen has been pretty bad as well. So I wouldn't call you crazy. If you want to go there, that's another uh, low on the stack for you. We mentioned Tariq Skubal taking on the St. Louis Cardinals. Has been a lot better as far as his recent form is concerned, but I do think the Cardinals do have quite a few lefty masters on their team. They're on the road in Detroit, and the Detroit bullpen is terrible. They can get to him early. Guys like Tommy Edmond, Dylan Carlson, Paul Goldschmidt, Nolan Arenado, Tyler O'Neill, Yadier Molina. Every single guy that I listed there is pretty good against left-handed Pitching, specifically Tommy Admin, I'd say the worst out of that list would be Dylan Carlson as far as his skills against the lefties. But then you got Paul DeJong, Lane Thomas, Edmund Sosa at the bottom of the order. I don't think it's the worst stack at all. Uh, and I think Scubo could, you know, definitely show some of his hard contact issues again eventually here, even though he's been picking it up and being a lot better. Uh, you know, could be giving up, could be striking out quite a bit of guys while giving up home runs kind of deal. And that could pay off for you in tournaments if you're stacking up the guys that hit those home runs. So, uh, Andrew Keeney does have some hard contact issues taking on San Francisco. If you would like to go there, it's in L.A. Much better hitting environment for them than it would be if they were playing in San Francisco. Austin Slater, Buster Posey, Wilmer Flores, Darren Ruff expected to be back in the lineup. That's a big addition. Uh, so, you know, if you want to go there, I wouldn't call you crazy. You can definitely pitch Andrew Keeney as well. But And then that's when things start to drop off. You can target Blake Snell with those Dodgers bats if you'd like, honestly. Uh, the last guy that I would probably mention would be Andrew Kittredge taking on the Boston Red Sox. Uh, as far as his splits are concerned, he's really bad against left-handed hitting. Um, and going up to the Red Sox, I mean, he's only going to be an opener is the problem. And so, I mean, then they're going to go to Ryan Yarbrough. So, Danny Santana, Alex Verdugo against those lefties, Raphael Devers. But then they're expected to go to a lefty out of the bullpen. So then he's gonna then you got your stacks gonna be facing lefties. So if you want to go there for a sneaky stack, sure. It's not the most ideal situation, but just wanted to fill you in on that. And with that being said, that is my overall breakdown of the slate today. Before I let you guys go, I gotta give you my home run call of the day. Let's get into it. And my home run call of the day today is going to be Ramon Laureano taking on this Texas squad. A little bit of a unique situation here with the opener and Taylor Hearn and then going to Jordan Miles, but I really like the spot regardless. In the four spot, he'll get to take on Hearn to start things off and a guy that gives up a lot of hard contact to righties as well as Laureano's ability to hit lefties. Going to love that spot. And then if he doesn't get it done against him, he's going to get to take on Jordan Miles the rest of the way, most of the majority of the game. And that's a great spot to be in as well with Miles giving up a 479 slugging to righties and then Hearn a 481 slugging to righties. Both great matchups for Ramon Laureano. He can hit against both handedness of pitchers. Love this spot. I think he's going to have plenty of opportunity to do damage. Get him in your lineups because he is my home run call of the day. So there you have it, guys. Ramon Laureano, get him in your lineups. And that is all from me in this one. If you enjoyed the content, if you could please leave a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That would be greatly appreciated. Wish you guys all the best of luck tonight, and we will see you in the next one.